Hello audience, my name is Manslave and I am perhaps the founder or the main proponent of the elite MIGTO philosophical movement and I was uh, chatting with a, um, a, uh, a person on Facebook just a little while ago. Uh, he goes by the YouTube username of That Cynical Cynicism and I'm not going to mention his real name uh, here. Uh, he's a great guy. I respect him very much. Uh, very good on the topic of dealing with feminism. Um, he handles it more from a very scientific type of uh, perspective. Uh, but I don't think he quite yet understands uh, female nature. I don't think that's his area of expertise right now. And eventually he'll probably reach into it because if he digs deep enough beneath the surface of what feminism portrays itself to be... Uh, then he'll eventually have to uh, research into female nature and he'll discover these things. All right, so I was looking at the Feminist Frequency YouTube channel <clears throat> uh, today, and of course you can see it's January 20th of uh, 2013. It's uh, 5.02 p.m. on my clock. And I live in America, America, <laughs> America, the United States of America. Um, and uh, so anyway, I was just looking at an update on her YouTube channel because I was talking to that cynical cynicism about how she ran off with $160,000 for this Kickstarter project of tropes versus women in video games. And she promised by, um, by, um, by, um, you know, that, that by the end of August of 2012, that she was supposed to, um, make all these videos in, in this series of tropes versus women in video games. Now, I'm looking at her YouTube channel right now, and look, I mean, look at this. Look at what I see. Date added, newest to oldest. And, like, I just refresh the page, and the newest video that she has uploaded, period, is the Support My Kickstarter Project of Tropes vs. Women. And that video was uploaded, like, seven months ago. And, um, now what I'm doing right now is I got my mouse cursor above the flag as inappropriate uh, little button here on YouTube, and I'm just, I'm just really... I'm just really poised and, and really um, uh, eager to click um, that button to flag it as inappropriate, but I have restraint, um, and I'm waiting for these bitches to flag my shit so we can just trigger like a mutually assured destruction of YouTube channels. Um, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, it reminds me of a Cold War or something like that, you know. Uh, feminists flag people's shit all the time because feminists are apparently, the, you know, offended by absolutely everything as a outward manifestation of their own inherent fucked upness of being weak and pathetic, which contradicts their own outward portrayal of you know, being strong and independent, you know, what they try to use to compensate for how weak and pathetic they actually are, because after all, actions do speak louder than words. Okay, so I was looking at this Kickstarter project and all that, and I was just looking to see if she had produced any new content or whatever, and as you can see, I am not subscribed to her. Now you can see uh, Validation Warfare as the, um, the uh, <clears throat> you know, the YouTube user that I go by. Alright, so I clicked on this link right here and went to her webpage, trying to see if there's any updates. Well, there there's a few videos here that are on YouTube, but not on her YouTube channel because they're not uploaded by her. And it's just more, path uh, more pathetic uh, bullshit, okay? Now, you can see she's got a, a whole bunch of games here. Oh, what do you know? Only for the Xbox 360. Uh, well, there's a few for the Nintendo Wii, but mostly for the Xbox 360, as you can see this color logo here. And for the PlayStation 3, as you can see by their logo there. You know, it, it's it's all entirely 7th generation game consoles. You know, it, it's like... She has, like, no taste, 
and you know, and and she's only up on the newest, most expensive shit. And um, now she, uh, uh, what? As for now, we can play games from the following systems: Super NES, GameCube. Wait. Anyway, yeah, she's not cool enough for the Super Nintendo, even though she claimed in a video that that's where she got her start. But, you know, she didn't get her start on the Intellivision, which is a system that's the same age as me. Well, I'm about to be 33 in about a month and a half. Um, you know, I think she's in her late 20s. I think she's like three and a half years younger than me or whatever. And, uh, you know, basically right around the time when she was being born, you know, I was, you know, watching my dad play video games. And, you know, I started playing video games back in like, what, 1985? Or something like that with a system that's the same exact age as me. Um, <clears throat> you know, the Intellivision, which released on the American market in, um, what I believe, 1980. Um, it was a main competitor to the Atari 2600. Uh, it's of the, um, the second generation video game consoles. Anyway... Um, you know, I've been into video gaming longer than her. Uh, you know, the Super Nintendo reached North America in, um, you know, September of 1991. And she talked about how, you know, in one of her videos about how the Super Nintendo was the earliest video game, you know, introduction that she had in her life. Which shows that she's nearly a decade behind me. You know, I mean, she couldn't have possibly played it any earlier than 1991, but matter of fact, the way she describes it, you know, she may have been playing it in like 1993. So, you know, she's just, just you know, more of a new kid on the block and doesn't quite know. And it's just, it just shows that, that she, um, oh, you can ignore that, that's the neighbors. Um, it just shows that, well, once I'm going to get into the topic of how she uh, invades an aspect of, well, look at, the, look at this, Lego and Gender video part two, you know, the boys club. Well, fuck, I mean, what the hell? I mean, what if a man, like, what if the male gender actually wants to build something up uniquely only for themselves? I mean, they are the ones who should enjoy it. They put forth the effort to build it for themselves. And yet, this bitch, you know, this fucking poop mouth, Anita Sarkeesian, like, is just one of the prime examples of a woman who will invade uniquely male organizations or entities or markets or whatever, you know, in invade something that's built up by a man and then expects it to conform to, to female um, desires. I mean, if females want something that's uniquely theirs, they should fucking put forth the effort to build it. But they don't. They wait for men to do all the hard shit. I mean, look at it. I mean, like, like everywhere. I mean, look at construction. Women want to be in construction now. Why? Because it pays a bunch of money. And, of course, they have... This goes into the female need to, like, confine and imprison the male. It's like an inherent jealousy. Now, I just picked up my audio voice, voice recorder, so if you're listening to me on the audio, uh, then you'll notice that my voice has gotten a little bit louder. Um, I'm recording uh, upon two different um, things at the same time. My computer as a screencast, and then um, uh, my uh, personal voice recorder as just, you know, so I can distribute just the audio. Um, and so anyway, um, <clears throat> I mean, look at it. Women have this, this desire to enslave the male gender. And you need to understand why that is. They are insanely, insanely and deep-seatedly jealous of male capabilities. But you got to look into our evolution. I mean, look at it. Women and men's paths have been divided. You know, like, like as Esther Viller describes it. Okay, and that happens as a microcosm in each individual person's life. Where Esther Viller, in her book, The Manipulated Man, excellent book, I highly recommend for everybody to purchase it. <clears throat> I think it's going to be worth the money you pay for it. So anyway, she describes about how at birth, males and females have the same capabilities. Uh, you know, but 
by age 10, by puberty time, the females have noticed that they have characteristics about themselves which, in which they can use to actually manipulate and motivate others. And what they basically take upon themselves is they, they decide to take upon themselves a pathway of prostitution is what it basically amounts to, where they use, you know, their feminine cap their character well fem feminine characteristics, um, and to wield vaginal power effectively <clears throat> over other people. They can manipulate women through the use of automatic own group preference. Uh, they can also manipulate men through. <clears throat> Through um, the desire of being validated by you know the you know the whole cultural thing of female approval, um, and also access to vagina so he can feel like a man, and the whole it goes into a whole other aspect with Freudian psychology and all kind of other stuff. <clears throat> and I have an understanding of this stuff. It's just I don't have enough time to make a recording. I've already made this one ten minutes already. Okay. Uh, ten minutes for the video. Now, y you see this. Women are highly manipulative. Well, Esther Viller talks about in her book where, you know, like I said, I'm continuing on, uh, by age ten uh, or by puberty time, the female has decided to take upon herself a life of prostitution, effectively, uh, symbolic, representative, um, or, you know, or the analogy of prostitution, you know, or similar characteristics, the effects that prostitution results in so that basically she can use her feminine attributes to get what she wants and, mani and manipulate society. Like I said, through female, through automatic uh, own group preference on the part of the female and through uh, invoking the protector provider instinct of the male. Okay. Now, uh, Esther Viller says at this point, it's, it's in which uh, the male and the male and the female their paths are divided forever. Okay. Um, the male, the male is uh, is is expected to to bear the greater burdens of of things in society. We see this to where men are expected to be more responsible for their actions. We see that uh, men oftentimes have greater consequences. Well, that's because there's a lot of bias in public perception, okay? And what this does, it causes the male gender to evolve in, in certain ways, you know, uh, in cultural ways and, you know, emotional and developmental ways into which, and this is why I describe it's like a microcosm, in which the male gender eventually throughout his life, he evolves to take upon himself superior characteristics, um, and, and, you know, if he is to thrive in his environment, okay? Now, the female, as having everything or so many things accommodate her, um, you know, because we all know deep down, male and females, we, we all know that male and females, uh, you know, we all, deep, deep down, okay, deep down as people, we all know that males and female, or we all know as males and females, that, you know, we all know this subconsciously that the female gender is inherently pathetic. And what I mean by pathetic is I'm using a standard of, standard of expectation in which women and society imposes upon males. And then using that lens to, see, to then look at the female through, you see that females are pathetic. You see what I'm saying? Now, the problem comes in that females expected all this shit from men and all that, and so it raises the bar of expectation, you know, um, <clears throat> and then if you decide to try to compare men and women, then you'll see that women don't measure up, and basically they're pathetic, and if they want to escape that label, they should fucking woman up and, and achieve, you know, like, like in the movie G.I. Jane, and I was thinking about this yesterday on uh, Saturday, as you can see right now, it's Sunday, um, but I was thinking about this Saturday, you know, the movie G.I. Jane, um, and in the movie, um, oh gosh, uh, this, this, 
member of Congress or this senator, uh, she's a politician, and she's played by a woman named, um, oh, it's, uh, it, it's the one that's in uh, The Graduate. Um, it, it's the woman, um, oh, gosh. Um, her name is Anne, um, fuck. I just ran out of fuel. Um, all right. Okay, Anne Bancroft, right here. Now, you can see, now what movies was she in? She was in G.I. Jane. Um, oh, come on. No, I know she was in film come on let's bring it up yep here we go gi jane she's a senator in the uh, in the movie <clears throat> uh, as you can see uh, uh u.s senator played by ann bancroft and what she does is i've seen this movie before and uh She's got this feminist agenda and all this in which she, you know, wants to prove that women can handle the shit. And so, like, she picks out this woman played by Demi Moore, who's like some kind of naval intelligence analyst or just whatever. And, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, and, uh, she, uh, yeah, she sends, uh, this this you know the senator sends this woman here Demi Moore's character sends her into into the Navy SEALs um, and expects um, and basically tries to impose preferential treatment upon the the main female character played by Demi Moore um, and trying to accommodate you know uh, feminine um, weaknesses in comparison to the, to the male. Well, the thing is, Demi Moore <laughs> is, uh, uh, her character in the movie actually, um, decides to, like, be more equal with the guys by, like, raising up to the bar and increasing her level of performance instead of falling into the expectations of the United States Senator, played by Anne Bancroft, um, you know, which was to have special preferential treatment and all that. Um, and <clears throat> there was a scene in which uh, there was some violence that took place, and um, Demi Moore's character got the shit beat out of her, and she was all bruised and shit. And she didn't cry foul. She didn't, you know, act all pathetic and ne and needy of protection and all that. She just took it like a man and that is why the men in her unit respected her. She earned their respect by going through the same exact, ex same exact type of treatment um, in the same way that they did, and she overcame that obstacle in her life. You know, the, the character in the movie did this. And then she earned the respect of men. And, you know, and it works out good, and I'm like... Hell yeah, that's a good idea. Equality of treatment. And then, <clears throat> you know, the team worked out really well, and they were successful, and basically it had a happy ending. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it, it, matter of fact, I need to buy this, because I saw it on TV, and then when I was in the Army, they showed it to us. Um, when I was in the Army, you know, we had some downtime, and they would show it to us on, <laughs> they'd bring out the metal cart with, a, you know, a big, like, 24-inch, like CRT tube TV and uh, and a VCR and pop in the tape and of course he had to be responsible for rewinding it and that sort of thing and and uh, so anyway I probably need to buy this movie yeah I need to buy this movie and uh, I need to put it in my vidlib and uh, I think it's worth it I mean, I mean it's a pretty well made movie and it's made by Ridley Scott so it's supposed to be you know pretty good anyway I mean it's supposed to have a pretty good reputation. Um, you know, so I'll probably buy that, <clears throat> or purchase the movie and add it to my library. I don't know if I'll get it on Blu-ray, it depends on if I can get it in a two-pack, because I like to actually get the two-pack of movies on Blu-ray, so I can have it on DVD, Blu-ray, you know, have it on DVD to rip and transcode, put on my vidlib, you know, my external USB hard drive to be my video library, 
Uh, but then I do like to have Blu-ray because the discs are better protected. They last longer, uh, and they're actually becoming very cost-effective now. Um, there are several Blu-ray movies for under ten dollars. You'd be surprised. Some of them are under eight. You know, uh, the other day I bought Contact, which is a pretty good movie. I bought that on uh, Blu-ray for uh, six dollars, and uh, you know, at Walmart, I still haven't broke the seal on it yet, and I still haven't watched it. I mean, I've seen the movie. I've got it on VHS. But anyway, um, yeah, I might get this movie. <clears throat> if anything, I'll get I'll get it on DVD. Okay. Well, uh, Esther Viller talked about in her book, The Manipulated Man, about how um, uh, men and women's paths are divided forever. And um, Esther Viller, yeah, here's, um, here's some information on her and her book. The uh, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, some of the strategies that women use are they lure men with sex using seduction strategies yeah that's pretty obvious the use of praise to control men by administering it carefully yeah i've read that part the use of emotional blackmail as a means of controlling men yeah that's pretty that's pretty common the use of love and romance as a guise to mask her real intentions and motives and that's a really significant um you know uh revelation that that esther viller has done right there and uh um yeah, she's pretty good, and I might buy all of her books, but I'm definitely... I already own The Manipulated Man as an uh, e-book on my Kobo e-reader, but I think I'm going to buy a physical copy of it. Um, She's uh, really good, and I highly, highly recommend that people read her book. Look, it's only 155 pages. I mean, come on, you know? And... um. So anyway, she describes about how men and women's paths are divided forever. Um, now, I'm getting off topic and just branching out and just branching out. Um, so, uh, feminist frequency, okay. So I checked out her website and, you know, more pathetic bullshit where she just whines and bitches and pisses and moans and wants everything to conform to her. Basically, women invade men's spaces. Uh, and they do this so much, you know, I mean, women behave as if they are slave masters, and men need to wake up to that fact, okay, I mean, seriously, I mean, look at it, they, they, they don't behave as an equal, most of the time they behave as if they're inferior, but also at the same time they try to, to, to behave as if they are a slave master, an owner, and here's the analogy that I often use. Imagine gender relations in society as a uh, retail store um, or a fast food restaurant, anything that has to deal with the public. And you look at this, well, it's often because women dominate these jobs because they're easier to do and don't require hardly any education and this and that. Um, once again, you know, sticking and uh, conforming to a lower standard. Um... Of course, women love to be in retail. They can just stand around and, like, yeah, you know, talk, chat, yak, be counterproductive, and still get a fucking paycheck. You know, it's basically a more s subtle form of welfare. And now, you know, I like retail uh, because I like being around products. Now, retail is not my dream job. It's probably not my most favorite, but it's one of the jobs that I, you know, somewhat enjoy. I, I, I get some amount of enjoyment because you can learn about products and teach people about products. <clears throat> and um, for me, it's like a teaching job. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so then, um, anyway... Uh, of course, it doesn't have near the pay. Uh, so I, um, um, okay. For example, look at look at uh, look at the retail industry. Okay, you got these women. They want to work these jobs, and they want all these soft, easy jobs. And of course, you know, in all the hard aspects of the job, you know, doing maintenance, doing the manual labor, all this. Well, you you find men in those jobs, don't you? Yeah. The men get to operate the fucking crane or the lift or whatever they have to do to change the light bulbs and do all the dangerous work. <clears throat> men usually operate the pallet jacks. Um, 
You know, men usually do the cart pushing jobs. Uh, all the shit that women don't want to do. You, you always hear that, you know, that debate about jobs that Americans won't do. Well, pff, they should rephrase it, jobs that women won't do. You know, it's a little more accurate. Okay? Now, um, I'm about to close my curtains so I can preserve, preserve my uh, heat because I solar heat my apartment uh, because uh, the sun has just uh, went down. And if I leave my curtains open, then the uh, then the heat will transfer through, and it will start cooling my apartment. Um, okay, so I close my curtains because they are thermally insulated panels. I just heated my apartment for a few hours, and um, for almost five hours, and it it reached a temperature of 72 degrees in here you know, plastic on the windows and that sort of thing. Um, you know, basically using the power of the sun, which is free, uh, it raised from 67 degrees to 72 degrees. It, it averaged about one degree per hour. <clears throat> and that's, you know, totally free, you know. Um, now it's pretty warm in here. Okay, now, okay. Now, think of it this way. Women... You see that they always reach for these management jobs. Now, why is that? It's not only because they offer more pay, but they offer more authority. You know, I mean, they 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 allow women to reach the position in which they feel in which they'll be able to carry out their agenda. They'll be able to tell people what to do. They'll be in charge of men. You ever notice that? <clears throat> and um. You know, and th that's why they seek management positions, and especially, you know, corporate uh, level, you know, um, administration, uh, CEOs. They always reach for that high stuff. And then it's just because, uh, and you notice this, uh, this bitchery going on where, yeah, men have been CEOs for a long-ass time. But women fail to see the real structure and the truth. That yes, the all they see is what they want. They they want to fucking reach up and achieve that reward. You know what I'm saying? But they don't want to fucking work for it. Look at this shit. I mean, it's like they want that CEO job just because a man is up there. You know what I'm saying? And they feel like they basically women feel that they need to rival with men. And, and for what? I mean, fuck. I mean, come on. Why isn't it about? a person rising up to that level. Why do they always see things through the lens of gender? Because they are ashamed of their own their own insecurities, their own uh, in, their, their their own in, incap their own lack of capability, their own inferiority, okay? Um but in, in in that, when you analyze that, it shows their true self mentality. They are a selfish, fucking cancerous, inherently destructive entity. And it's ironic that they have the genitalia that actually reproduces the species. You know what I'm saying? Well, it takes men also, but I'm talking about they have the womb. They have the birth canal. I mean, it's... I wish people could really see this and, and and I never even suspected that this stuff would be the case. You know, even, you know, even to even just a year ago, I was beginning to learn this stuff and I I never really understood that it was like that. There was a splinter in my mind and all that <clears throat> of understanding that there's something wrong, but but 2 years ago, you know, in early 2011, I never would have suspected this stuff especially five, six, even ten years ago, you know, or twenty years ago. I mean, I'm disturbed at the shit that I found, and that's why I got the attitude that I have. You know, like, it's just this discovery of what a woman really is when you analyze it deeply. And it's not my own projection or interpretation or whatever. You just look at the way they act and then think what would cause a person to act that way. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I mean, like, 
you know, just kind of set what, what women and feminism say aside for later to understand, and then look at what they actually do. You see, that's what I'm saying. Actions speak louder than words. And so anyway, okay. Now, women, they desire to basically be the management in, in the business. And then they expect men to be the workers. And that's, you know, when I say the business is almost like a, a metaphor for society. Women want to be at the top. They want to make all the decisions. They want everything to conform to them because as a manager, as a CEO or president of a company or of an entity, you know, a woman in power, they will have the ability to then mandate conformity to their own desires. You see what I'm saying? They feel then that they'll have the power to shape the world to conform to their own desires and all that. Whereas men, you know, have been in power traditionally, um, you know, in, you know, governments or corporations, businesses or whatever. But you always see where the men are expected to conform to society's expectations for the benefits of all people or as many people as possible. You see what I'm saying? A man is expected to look beyond himself and serve others. A female is allowed to only focus on herself and her own needs and desires. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference between male and female. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you'll actually be able to really comprehend the, the, the crimes against humanity that the female gender has fundamentally committed. You know, I, like, I was going to make a video titled, um, you know, Women and War Criminals, One and the Same, because, like, you know, in the gender war, women are like the war criminals. And maybe that's what I'll title this video. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, they, they, they do that. They, they won't fight fair. I mean, most of them won't. I mean... Like, there's a few of them that might mostly play fair because, you know, they they somewhat vaguely catch on to the fact that, you know, if you obey the rules, then, like, you know, things go better or, well, depends on what kind of rules because, after all, women do make, make up. Women are like, women are like an egotistical dungeon master when playing the game of um, D&D. &D. <clears throat> Not that I play d and I haven't really ever played it. I mean, I've set in amongst some people that play it, but, like, I always hear about this phenomenon in which the Dungeon Master likes to change the rules on demand or, like, just randomly, spontaneously to, to accommodate the, their own desires and all that. Well, women actually function like that. They, they are basically, you know, like the Crooked Dungeon Master, you know, in a game of d and I mean... Come on, people. I mean, like, why don't you see this stuff? Why don't you understand? You know, get off the pussy. Get off the fucking drug. It's just going to harm you. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, another thing with, um, with, um, with, you know, women is war criminals. In the gender war, the women are the criminals. I mean, come on, people. I mean, like, how are they not like the Nazis? You know what I'm saying? I mean, look at the fucking rad fems, you know? Some of them want to exterminate the, the male gender. Doesn't that remind you of the shit that Hitler tried? You know what I'm saying? I mean, oh, since when, since when do men try to exterminate the female gender? Never. Oh, but we get accused of it. Fucking poop mouth bigots fucking feminist pieces of shit do all this shit like all the time they just piss and moan and whine and bitch and, and expect everything to fucking conform to them because they're inherently fucking pathetic you know and I'm so fucking pessimistic about the female gender because for 20 fucking years that's two goddamn fucking decades I thought that if I conform to women's expectations and serve them and all that, that they'll somehow reward me with, like, some kind of pleasant life. But no, they fucking stab me in the fucking back. They fucking fight unfair. They hit you beneath the belt. Metaphorically, these are all metaphors. And they do all this shit 
because they're fucking corrupt. I mean, fuck. I mean, god damn. I mean, this is... I mean, society and this planet is so fucking plagued by the inherent fucked upness of the fucking X chromosome. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like... And I had better be, be, I mean, if, if we're going to be a fair and balanced and equal, and equal society, I, I had better be able to say this shit without consequence. Of course, you know, I'm going to have some kind of consequence. And I'd be surprised if my shit caught on and become popular. You know what I'm saying? It just, like, well, in order to become popular, a lot of times, you know, something has to be uh, modified to conform and to accommodate the... Um, the, the attributes of the audience. I mean, we see this all the time for computer software. I mean, my computer right here, and I'm not running Microsoft Windows. I like to remind everybody of that. Um, uh, my, my computer runs an Intel processor. Uh, it's the second generation, which is Sandy Bridge microarchitecture, the, uh, the Sandy Bridge or second generation Intel Core i5. 2320 processor, 3 gigahertz normal operating speed, 3.3 gigahertz max turbo speed, um, uh, quad core but single threading, so just four total threads. I got 8 gigs of RAM. It's starting to become an average computer. Now, nearly a year ago, when I, whenever I bought it, it was more of an upper class computer and all that, but the i5 is still an upper class type of processor. You know, pretty much only really superseded by the i7 in terms of performance, or the i7 Extreme <clears throat> for desktop PCs. But it's still in the performance tier, you know, it's above the regular mainstream average computing, which in that case would be a, a Core i3. Anyway, you know, it's the, the Intel uh, x86 microarchitecture you know so in order for software to run on this machine it has to be compiled and basically built to conform to the you know processor characteristics of this hardware or the the hardware characteristics of this microprocessor and all that you know i can't go and run something that was compiled for you know uh spark or you know you know, ARM, which is Acorn Risk Machines, you know, I can't run something that, that is for the power PC, <clears throat> you know, like IBM Power Microarchitecture. That's just an example. Um, and, uh, so anyway, um, now, um, an example, okay, I've already went on that big rant. Now, we're going to watch this video. It's on, Well, it's 10 minutes, 30 seconds. I'm, I'm going to watch this video about... Uh, I've already seen it already, but it's about Anita Sarkeesian. And I, I'm, I'm going to interrupt it with, with commentary. Um, this is one of the most recent videos of Anita Sarkeesian where she's speaking at fucking the TED conference. I mean, of all places... I mean, look at it. People go to TED, and they'll talk about technology. They'll talk about like you know global events or whatever. And I think it's a cool thing. It's like this open, like you know, the this this open format for people to <clears throat> um, share ideas. And you know, most of the time there's a lot of prominent people, as you can see, the some of these names that you might recognize. And, um, um, you know, and, and I think that, you know, the TED conference, you know, technology, entertainment, and design is, is a pretty good idea to just make people aware of things and, it's just, uh, <clears throat> it's a nice outlet for, for, I didn't even know that it's been around for that long, since 1984, because I've just heard about it last year in 2011. So anyway, it, it, Ted is pretty, pretty prestigious, I mean, pretty well-established and prestigious. I mean, 
Come on. I mean, look, look, they got Richard Dawkins, they got Bill Gates, they got Google founders, uh, people that founded Google, such as Larry Page. <clears throat> um, they got, um, well, look at this. They've got um, Bill Clinton on there speaking. He's pretty famous and well known. Um, just like, you know, Bono, the famous rock person from uh, U2. You know, the, it, it's pretty, like, well established, right? Where's this fucking bigot named Anita Sarkeesian, the person that runs the Feminist Frequency um, YouTube channel and website? Um, here she is right here. Who I thought was cool at first... Before I found out she's a fucking hate-mongering bigot. And I thought, you know, somebody that reviews video games and all that. Wow, that's pretty cool. And her videos are well-produced and well-made. She's got good equipment and all that. But then she fucking spews her venom. And it's like, you know what? I, I can't handle this shit. You know, bitch, you're fucking, you know, you're going down. And, <clears throat> you know, because cause if, if, a, if a man did the same thing, oh, he'd be labeled as a fucking hate-monger, you know? So let's obey the same universal standard. This bitch, Anita Sarkeesian, is a fucking hate monger. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to see this video that I found today. I want you to see how pathetic she is, in her own words. Oh, and, and notice where this is coming from. Uh, this is coming from TED itself, you know, the, 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 <clears throat> the, the conference. And you know, that's who it's uploaded by. <clears throat> I'd like to share with you a story about how I accidentally became the villain of a massively online game in real life. Oh, I'm such a victim. Look at me. I'm a villain. They made me out to be a villain. Oh, my gosh. I'm so, I'm so under fire. I'm, I'm harmed. Look, look at this. Oh, she gets all extra dressed up more than normal. <clears throat> We're only 30 seconds in. You see that? We're only 30 seconds into the hate mongering. I've been running a video web series on YouTube called Feminist Frequency, where I deconstruct the representations of women in the media. I try to provide the tools to give people the language to talk about uh, sexism and issues of gender using accessible language from popular culture, such as uh, TV shows, movies, comic books, and video games. So, let's see. Comic books built by men, an industry built exclusively by men, for men... <clears throat> because men are the ones who wanted to do it. Men had the interest. Men put forth the effort for decades. Uh, same thing with video games. You know what I'm saying? So right here, we have evidence that she fucking is an infiltrator. Uh, well, she just fucking invade. Well, she fucking invades. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, fuck, bitch. I mean, come on. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the fucking boiler room. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't say kitchen because she would regard that as like some kind of sexist, whatever, you know, hate mongering bigotry or whatever. But I mean, you know, if you can't, if it, 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 okay. If you can't, okay, if you feel uncomfortable by it and you, then maybe it's not necessarily for you. You know what I'm saying? You know, maybe it's not a place where, you know, you would thrive or where you belong, or whatever. And if you can't handle it, you know, then just get out. Oh! <clears throat> oh, 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 gosh. What, what is that? It's, oh, there, there, there it is. There it is. There's the invisible gun. It's pointed right at her temple, and it says, you know, play video games that, that feature males in there and all that, and, and, and male roles and, and and male ideas and concepts oh the invisible gun oh i suppose that made her do it yeah that's what that's why we can't see the gun to her head it's invisible but there's a gun there and it's making her do stuff she don't want to do <laughs> that's an expression <clears throat> now video games are really interesting because it's actually the fastest growing form of mass media today 
This is a photo of me at age 10 playing uh, Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. So I've been playing games for quite a while. And. <laughs> nah, not as long as I have. I mean, fuck, I've been playing video games almost as long as you've been born. I mean, come on. Like, almost as long as you've been alive. You know what I'm saying, Anita? You're pathetic. And. <clears throat> You got into it with the Super Nintendo? I mean, the Super Nintendo was a good system, you know. I mean, th there were other, there were some other good systems, too. I'm not going to get into a debate about video games, you know, and, and the consoles. But, like, the point is, by the time you got into video games, shit already got easier. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to deal with all the, like, more involved stuff where you had to, like, w when games were different. I mean, Anita, your, your gaming experience is exclusively point and click. You know what I'm saying? Did you have to play any command line games? You know? <clears throat> Did you have to do anything that involves some real skill building? No, you didn't. You know? You just, you went into a man's realm, and instead of embracing it and, and conforming to it, oh, you want it to fucking conform to you. You want to change everything to appeal to your fucking inherent patheticness. Continue on. Uh, in addition to being a lot of fun to play, games have lots of positive benefits as well. So, again, I've been playing games for a while, but there's something that's always kind of... Of course, you've been playing games for a while, uh, less than I have. And I've been playing games for a while, but there's something that's always kind of bothered me. It is no secret that the video game industry boasts some of the most sexually objectified, stereotyped, and downright oppressive portrayals of women in any medium. There it is. Right around one minute and 25 seconds. There it is. <clears throat> This is where I'm going to get into my discussion about feminism and its its um and its encapsulation or dealings or, or its portrayal of female nature or its lack of true revelation into female nature. Look at this right here, damsel in distress right here. This is like Princess P or like Peach or whoever it is from Donkey Kong, and um. And she's crying for help. Okay. This is Miss Pac-Man. <clears throat> and what's she doing? She's basically trying to look attractive. All this stuff. Women throughout history will assume certain roles that give them advantage. Okay? This, I've talked about this before and other people have talked about it before. The, the desire to see themselves as an inherently helpless object to be acted upon. And like Barbarossa had mentioned, um, you know, uh, when, when women... Uh, oh, fuck, who's that phone call? Um, when, when women uh, <clears throat> portray themselves... Oh, come on, stop. I'm doing a video right now. I can't be bothered with the phone call, all right? Okay. Women portray themselves as an inherently valuable object because of their their uh, ability for procreation, okay? But like Barbarossa had described that you know, an inherently valuable object is worthy of protection, protection and provision. Uh women have benefited from being able to evade responsibility, uh, you know, not having to take risks, and all that. They've taken the, well, basically women are like electricity, you know, it, it, the path of least resistance. You know what I'm saying? That's what they have in common with electricity. Okay. Now, they've chosen the easier path, which is to not take responsibility for their actions or to not actually... Um, rise up to a challenge or whatever. And we can see that by, look at this. The, their arms are thinner, um, which means they haven't had to really do any heavy lifting. Um, 
they are more ornate. They're more ornamental um, now because of their biology. They have the ability to reproduce. But look, I mean, look, females are ornamental, you know, and fundamentally, all they're good for is reproduction. I mean, they are the predator beneath the doll's face. I mean, they they, they focus so much on their outward appearance to basically basically lure men into interacting with them. Um, women are very predatory. Uh, oh, look at this. Oh, you see women with guns. Oh, yeah. Um, and I've actually, I've, I've actually been disturbed at how eager women are to wield a weapon. You know, we always hear that guns are something um, uh, inherent to men, you know, the whole need for violence and all that. But, you know, you'd be surprised how women, how many women like to pick up a gun and actually point and shoot. You know what I'm saying? My former owner, this was almost three years ago, whatever, when I took her out shooting, she enjoyed it and all that, just shooting stuff. Um, and... Um, I guess they, they regard it as like some kind of amount of progress toward invading a man's life whenever he trusts her with a weapon. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, you know, they, they actually enjoy it more than they let on. Okay? Um, but, where did I go to this? Okay, yeah, this video right here. Uh, you see the portrayal, like you see women in this damsel in distress role and all that. Well, women are very much ashamed of their lesser achievements, but they need to own up to it because they don't feel like putting as much effort into things like men do. And it's because of their biology. Because, you know, they've been restricted to a, you know, simply a reproductive role, and they've chosen not to take upon themselves the harder task and to break out of just that type of a role, you know, or that exclusive role, um, and they, they, they don't, I mean, by and large, they don't want to do the work, they don't want to take the risk, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to defend, you know, uh, uh, life and property <clears throat> and all that. They rather have men take all the risks. And, of course, they, women, try to seek more benefit, and that's why what they have going for them is their out, outward physical appearance, uh, which is their disguise, uh, it's like the flesh on a Terminator, you know what I'm saying? And that's how they uh, are able to um, succeed in infiltrating and invading aspects of men's lives. And women wield a whole lot more power than they're willing to uh, even acknowledge. <clears throat> because if they were to acknowledge how much power they wield, then people would stop giving them power. People would stop giving more power to women because people would 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 see that women already have enough power to to affect change in society. That's one of the reasons why women portray themselves as powerless because they want the transfer to keep on continuing. They want to obtain more and more and more. You know, it's just like a fucking welfare mama. She always claims that she doesn't have enough money. You know, you know what I'm saying? And and it shows the 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 need and the or the desire for resource acquisition. Well, they if if there's anybody that believes that money can buy happiness, it, it would be women. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, well, speaking about wealth transfer, women know that men want access to the vagina. Women offer that access to the vagina in order to get what they want and need, which is resources of which they don't want to work to obtain, so they just use their vagina that they were already born with, you know? <clears throat> okay. Feminism is a symptom of female nature. And it also functions as like a public relations um, campaign to conceal the negative aspects of female nature. Well, at the same time, it actually brandishes another part of female nature. 
you know, they, they in, okay, in order to say that men are the violent ones who need to be controlled and to say that men are the manipulative ones who need to be restrained, women will then have to use a method of comparison. And then by doing this, they'll have to portray themselves as weaker and basically inferior, okay, through the whole comparison thing. <clears throat> well, by doing this, what they actually do is reveal what they really are, which is weak and pathetic. So you can, you can begin to notice that feminism is the most significant source of real misogyny. The most significant source of real misogyny that, that exists in this world. I mean, feminism is so much of a... I mean, its portrayal of itself is so much of a contradiction to what it really is. I mean, why do people not see this? You know, and I don't hate women, and I really try not to hate women. It's just, the problem is I can't trust them and I can't respect them when they behave the way that they do. You know, when I look at a woman, I don't feel, I basically don't feel anything. <laughs> not anymore. You know, I used to automatically feel a desire to be appreciated by her. And... <clears throat> And a desire to interact with her. Now I look at a woman and I feel nothing. I mean, I, I'll see a woman, you know, it's like, for example, you know, if a woman looks like she's a, she's attractive like this one is, you know, and she has a good looking face, good, you know, desire, you know, desirable looking face, desirable looking hair, figures and all that, or figure and all the other kind of physical characteristics. I look at that and it's like, yeah, that looks appealing and attractive, but it's all just thoughts in my head. I don't actually feel my heart flutter or anything like that. I don't feel any physical reaction in my body. I used to. I used to feel big time, you know. I used to, have, I used to get butterflies in my stomach and all that. Now, I can, I can actually look at a woman and have indifference. Because I've learned what they really are. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and once your intimacy will be destroyed by the toxic actions manifest of female nature, then you'll have something in common with me, and, and then you'll, you will learn... Um, there's so much that can be mentioned about this, but I don't even have the time, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to continue on. So with that in mind, I decided to launch a fundraising campaign on the crowdfunding website Kickstarter. Where of course you did. Okay, you needed money, Anita. We all know that, you know. You need money to pay bills, buy equipment, you know, what, whatever, okay. That's understood. You are a person in a situation which needs money to achieve something. We understand that. <clears throat> the question is, why did you do a fundraiser? Now, we'll see it here later. She plays the role of the victim, and she gets people to transfer wealth or resources in the form of financial wealth toward her, and she obtains it and benefits from it. <clears throat> All right. Um, she has a goal of raising six thousand dollars. She raised a lot more than that. I mean, she raised. Fuck! I'll, I'll tell you how much she raised. Yep. Divided amongst her original, uh, the amount she took in, divided by the amount that she actually planned on receiving, she took in 26 and a half times the amount of money that she originally intended to take in. She, she set forth to, to get $6,000. <clears> she ended up receiving... One hundred and sixty thousand dollars. She received more than twenty-five times the amount of money that she originally tried to obtain. 
Look at how successful women are when they just fucking play that role of damsel in distress. They get the money. Well, in this case, it's money. Uh, there, are, there are times when the desire is to, to you know, is attention or action or whatever. 